Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss the topic of enhancement type MOSFET common source amplifier using enhancement type and channel MOSFET. So let us start. So this is a circuit given to us uh, where R1, R2, RD and RS values are given. That means it is a voltage divider network and uh, it is an enhancement type MOSFET and channel MOSFET with a gate drain source and substrate terminal. Uh, we have the input is connected to the gate terminal via the input coupling capacitor CC1 and output is taken from the drain terminal via the coupling capacitor CC2 and we have a bypass capacitor CS connected in parallel with RS value, RS register. Input is a 10 millivolt peak sine wave of 1 kilohertz frequency and uh, supply voltage, uh, DC supply voltage is given as 40 volts. The MOSFET parameters given are the threshold voltage is 5 volts and the KN value is uh, 0.12 milliampere per volt square. Now we apply first the DC analysis. So for the DC analysis, all the capacitors are behaving as an open circuit for DC and this uh, reduces to a simple voltage divider uh, voltage divider configuration network. So from the circuit we can write VG value as R2 divided by R1 plus R2 into VDD. If we work out in a calculator the value will come out to be 18 volts. Now we know that VGS is given by VG minus VS and uh, VS is given by ID into RS. So here it is VGS is equal to VG minus ID RS where VG value is 18 volts. So 18 minus ID times RS. RS is 820. So this becomes our equation number one. Now assuming that the given NMOS transistor is working in the saturation region, the drain current is given by ID is equal to KN times VGS minus VTN the whole square. Now KN value is 0.12 into 10 is to minus 3 into VGS minus 5 the whole square. VTN is 5 volt. Now this becomes the equation number 2. So we substitute uh, equation number 2 in 1, we'll get VGS is equal to 18 minus 820 into ID. ID is 8, uh, 0.12 into 10 is to minus 3 into VGS minus 5 the whole square. Now if we expand this term and solve it algebraically and we get a quadratic equation in terms of VGS which is 0 0.0984 VGS square plus 0 0.016 VGS minus 15.54 is equal to 0. And if you put this equation inside a calculator, you will get two values of VGS. So the two values of VGS are plus 12.48 volts and minus 12.64 volt. So definitely we reject the negative value because VGS has to be greater than the threshold voltage, which is a positive number for an NMOS. Now ID value is given by KN times VGS minus 5 the whole square. Now VGS value is known to us so it will be 0 0.12 into 10 is to minus 3 into 12.48 minus 5 the whole square. So if you work out in a calculator this value will come out to be 6.72 milliamperes. So a 2 point VGS Q comma IDQ is 12.48 volts comma 6.72 milliamperes. Now from this Q point we can evaluate the small signal parameter. So the small signal parameter GM is given by twice KN times VGSQ minus VTN and the KN value is given as 0.12 into 10 is to minus 3. VGS is 12.48 and VTN is 5. So if you work out this in a calculator, you will get definitely get a value of GM as 1.7952 milliampere per volt. After the small signal parameter is determined, now is the time to draw the small signal equivalent circuit. Let me reduce this. Okay, so small signal equivalent circuit of our common source amplifier with CS connected. That means his RS is bypassed via CS. Okay, so with RS bypassed means that the, the capacitor CS is still connected in the circuit in parallel to RS. So uh, for the small signal mid frequency equivalent circuit, we assume that all the capacitors will behave as a short circuit. So this RS will disappear if it is replaced by a short circuit. Okay, and the diagram will become like this, the small signal equivalent circuit. Here RG means R1 parallel to R2. So R, RG over here is R1 parallel to R2. And we have the, this is the one inside the box is my hybrid pi model, which is replacing my MOSFET. 
So between gate and source, we have open circuit, and between drain and source, we have a current source of value GM into VGS. Okay, and on the drain side, we have connected RD. Source is directly connected to the ground because uh, CS is bypassed. Uh, CS is replaced by a short circuit. So uh, basically, it's it's because RS is becoming redundant over here. And uh, here we can easily calculate the V out in terms of uh, input. So V out is given by a current source that is a current into RD. So this current over here into RD. So IR V is equal to IR. So basically this current is outgoing current. Hence we can write V out is equal to minus GM into VGS. That is the current into RD. And from the input side we know that this V in is parallel voltage with VGS. So we can write VGS is equal to V in. We substitute in the first equation. So we can get V out upon V in is equal to minus GM times RD. This is the formula with RS bypassed. Now GM value is known to us 1.79 pi 2 into 10 is to minus 3. RD value is known to us that is 3 kilo ohm. If you multiply them together, you will get a value as AV that is the voltage gain with RS bypassed is given by minus 5.3856. So that's the number which we are getting. Now for the second case, we consider the RS as unbypassed. Now what do you mean by RS unbypassed? RS unbypassed means that no coupling, uh, no bypass capacitor CS is present at all. Hence in the small signal equivalent circuit, RS will come into picture. This is what we mean. Okay, so here we have RS. That's the only difference between the previous circuit and the circuit. And uh, derivation for the V out upon V in is slightly tedious. So over here, we are directly using the formula. So AV is given by V out upon V in, which is equal to minus RD divided by the denominator is 1 upon GM plus RS. Now all the values we know, RD value, RS value and 1 upon GM value. Uh, we substitute inside the calculator and we get the value of AV as minus 2.178 by 8. So this is the voltage gain with RS and bypassed. Okay. So now we got the values of RS, uh, the, the value of voltage gain with bypass and unbypass. We now compare it with the LT spike simulated values. Now let me minimize the screen. Okay, so I'll minimize this and I open up LT spice now. Okay, so circuit is already made available ready for you all. Okay, so this is, let me just close the output first. Okay, let me delete those, any simulation commands initially. So let me adjust the screen now. I hope that the circuit diagram is visible. Let me go back to the original circuit diagram. Yeah, here it is. So here the supply voltage is 40. R1, R2 value is 22 and 18 mega ohm. RD is uh, 3 kilo ohm. As you can see, the circuit to your left hand side and right hand side are both the same. Left hand side is the one node PDF, and the right hand side is my LT Spice uh, schematic. And uh, the RS value is 820. The value of CC1, CC2 is 1 microfarad, CS is 100 microfarad. And we have defined the dot model parameters as follows. The moment we select NMOS, you will get M1 NMOS. So right click over here and make it as NMOS1. And now define dot model statement in the spice directive. So you will write dot model nmos1 space nmos space, uh, bracket VTO equal to phi. Now VTO is the threshold voltage. That's the syntax. And uh, KP has to be substituted as twice of KN. That will be uh, KN value is 0 0.12. So it will be 0 0.24 into 10 is to minus 3. So that's how we define the model parameters and click on OK. So this MOSFET will take the model parameters of uh, threshold voltage by and ANS 0.12 into 10 is to minus 3. Now we label the input and the output nodes. Uh, that is uh, V in underscore your name. You can under, you can label and you can you can label it as right click label net. Okay, I've already labeled it, so I'll not do again. So here I've named it as V in and V out underscore your name. Also label uh, D here you can right click. So you can label that capital G. Capital G stands for gate. This is drain and this is source. So it will it will come very handy if you name it if you label it this way. Now let me show you how. 
so again after the circuit schematic is ready we will go to simulate run it will ask for a simulation command we have to go for dc operating point so first of all we are checking the dc conditions over here we are getting the dc conditions let us check the dc conditions in the circuit okay so the value of id is coming out to be 6.72 milliamperes and here also we are getting the value of uh, id as 6.72 milliamperes the value of vgs is uh, vgs is vg minus vs that is 18 minus 5.514 so if i work out in a calculator that will be 12.48 which is also matching theoretically okay so this is how once the dc conditions are matching then only we should go for the ac conditions now for ac conditions let me just uh, you know deactivate this so for deactivating this dot op just put a full inside over here so it will get deactivated now next we are going to check the uh, input output versus time so it will ask for transient response we have to do transient response v in versus time and v out versus time so here the frequency is given as one kilohertz let's say i want to view only three cycles I will give three milliseconds and click on OK. A blank window will appear. Here I'll right click, add trace, and select V underscore my name. And again, go right click, add trace, V out underscore my name will come. So as you can see, output is a little bit uh, bigger than the input, which is the red color. And le now let's measure the uh, you know the output peak to peak. Here the input peak to peak is given as 10 millivolt. Peak to peak. Let us check the output peak to peak now. So I'll right click and add the cursor. One cursor. Again I'll sorry left click and again add one more cursor. Okay. So the peak to peak value, as you can see, it's coming out to be 53.78 my uh, around minus 53.78. And here also we are getting minus 53.78. Okay. And uh, if I calculate that with respect to gain. It will be minus 53.78 divided by 10. That is close to minus 5.38. Okay, so that's the value which we are getting. So it's quite close. Now let us increase the. This is 10 millivolt peak to peak. Uh, I will make it as 10 millivolt over here. That means it will be 10 millivolt peak. So output uh, the input will be 20 millivolt peak to peak. Let me run it again. Yeah, so I am getting around, yeah, as you can see, 10 millivolt and minus 10, that is 20 millivolt peak to peak. So for 20 millivolt peak to peak, how much we are getting? Let's check. So I left click and add the cursor at the top and also add the cursor at the minimum. Over here, we are getting 107.62. So we are getting quite close, 107.62 divided by 20 millivolt. That is coming out to be. 5.3855 that's very very close to this value as you can see now let's do one thing let us remove this capacitor from the circuit so i'll take a scissor and cut the wire now the capacitor is not included in the circuit that is the unbypassed case now let's check this value again i go to simulate i'll go to run and i'm definitely getting the output which is bigger than the input so it is working as an amplifier now let's check the output peak to peak value so left click and the cursor, again left click and I'll adjust the cursor to the peak to peak value and here I'm getting around 43 point, uh, you know, okay. So here I'm getting for 20 millivolt peak to peak, 43 minus 43.5 millivolt. Okay, so that's what we are written over here. Uh, 43.5 divided by 20 millivolt, you will definitely get an answer close to minus 2.1758. So that's the answer which we are getting and we can similarly observe it for a higher uh, you know uh, for 10 millivolt peak to peak signal so for 10 millivolt peak to peak signal its uh, value will be again let me quickly check the peak to peak value i left click and check the cursor value over here and left click and check the cursor value okay so we are getting around 21.75 uh, you know, close to minus 21.75 this divided by 10 will give us the gain which is minus 2.178 so that is quite close to this number this which is close to minus 2.175 okay so these are the results which we are getting which are very very accurate as you can see in, uh, with this waveforms and with this circuit diagram now let us go back over here 
So this is the table which you can verify very easily. Now for your BC lab number 10, we have to consider this news. Uh, I mean, the same circuit with different values. So the value of R1 and R2 is 40, kilo, 40 mega ohm and 10, 10 mega ohm. Value of RD is 3.3 .3 kilo ohm. RS is 1.2 kilo ohm. The value of coupling capacitor CC1 and CC2 are 1 microfarad. And uh, the, the bypass capacitor is given as 33 microfarad. Always select this higher value. So we can select it as 100 microfarad also. So here the VTN value is also different. Uh, VTN value is 3 volt and KN value is 0.4 milliampere per volt square. Uh, you know, the value of KN. The supply voltage is also changed to 30. Now you can similarly observe the DC analysis first and then the AC analysis. So kindly solve it on a paper. It will be a good practice for you all. And then only you can match the table. So once you could simulate the circuit in LT spice, put the values over here and match them with the calculated values. You will automatically come to know whether your circuit is behaving correctly or no. If the values of calculated, uh, uh, calculated theoretical calculated values and the simulated observed values are matching, that means uh, your effort to draw or to simulate a MOSFET amplifier is successful. Okay, so these above calculations were uh, are for reference, so you can similarly observe it and uh, you know attempt the MOSFET common source amplifier. So we have completed all the topics: how to check the gain, uh, a voltage gain with and without TS. So that's it for today. Next time we'll see some other configuration using MOSFET. So until then, have a good day and thank you.